Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, after having experimented with a prototype of my free piston Stirling engine, I made up the, the real thing. As promised, the metallic spring here in the power cylinder power piston assembly has been replaced by a virtual spring whereby there is a washer on both cylinder and on the piston. Both have magnets attached to it set to repel each other. So the, as a result, the power piston hangs or levitates halfway through its stroke, sort of, above the magnets of the cylinder. It's reasonably well balanced, you can see it can be spun and it's still spinning quite freely. The same true about the displacer piston, it's also spinning quite freely, it's also well balanced. Um, there is also a little device at the back, you can see this rod with a rubber hat attached to it. The purpose for that is to limit the upper movement of the power cylinder. Without that, on its upward stroke, it might fly out of the cylinder and ends up in the orbit somewhere. We don't want that. So there is a limiter here. So on its upper stroke, this washer or a skirt will hit it and bounce back like this. Well, that's about it. And, uh, what is left to do is to show how that thing works. So we light up the burner and let it warm up. Right, while it's warming up, I could show you that there is a couple of neodymium magnets attached to the axle of the power cylinder. This is the embryonic form of my future linear alternator. The two magnets are set up north to north, so set to repel each other, so I can't really compress them too much. The purpose for that setting is to make sure that the gradient of magnetic field is, in, is maximum if you move from up to down and down to up, the way a linear alternator would move, to make sure that the magnetic field changes at its maximum. So hopefully we'll optimize the generation of the electricity out of the linear alternator. That, that's for future projects. I will experiment with it, so it might be different. I might end up north to south connection of the two magnets, which in effect will make it a single magnet, albeit twice as powerful. Anyway, we'll try them, try to move it. Maybe it will work now. setup can actually generate electricity of this there is no doubt. I've got a little coil here attached to an LED and if you approach that coil next to a magnet you'll see LED flashing. Hope we're coming up on the camera. Both ways. This is not a very efficient way of generating electricity because coil is next to the magnet, not around the magnet, which will be in the end. But we'll see that. The other thing I want to show you is that because we have a magnet here attached to the power piston, we can actually simulate the load on the power piston by approaching a solid piece of conducting material like a metal, this aluminium block. Now, this is not a magnetic material, so it doesn't actually stick to it. But once the magnet is moving, if we approach that, I could feel it wants to move with the magnet due to the lenses effect. And it also acts as a magnetic brake, slowing it down, providing a load. You could see it's slowing down, but it's still going, so it has sufficient power. If we remove that thing, it of course accelerates again, because it's now unloaded. Again, approach the metal block. Slows down. I feel that it moves my hand. Well, that's basically it. The next project is to attach a linear alternator or make it. I'll try to generate a twist. Stopping. Uh, 
and it comes to a stop. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.